this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make our hooded llama blanket in our toddler size. I will be using a 10 millimeter furl streamlined hook for the majority of this pattern but you'll also need a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook as well and there'll be links in the de description box on where you can purchase these. So I will be using Bernat Softy Chunky for this pattern. And the colors that I've chosen for my toddler size are Heather Gray, Glowing Gold, Ultra Blue, Sea Green, and Emerald. The blanket is worked from the bottom up and I'll begin with Heather Gray. Our toddler size, you'll begin with a chain of 61, but for the smaller swatch that I'll be showing you how to work through, I will just chain 11. So chain out 61 for the toddler size. Once you've completed your chain, you're going to turn your work and crochet into the back humps of the chain. So we'll work in the second chain from the hook. And instead of crocheting through the back loop of the chain, we're going to go through this back hump and it will just make that edge a lot nicer. So what you'll now do is just single crochet across. So you will have a total of 60 stitches for the toddler size blanket. And our PDF includes child and adult size. Okay, so row one will be the right side of your blanket. And now we'll chain one in turn and begin our loop stitch pattern. The loops will always be worked on the wrong side of our work. To crochet the loop stitch, what we'll do is insert our hook through the first stitch. Now I like to hold my yarn up with my index finger. And what we're gonna do now with the hook is we're gonna go over top of the yarn. We're gonna go through the hole there created by our finger. Then you're going to twist your hook, grabbing the yarn from in behind and pull it through your stitch. I like to just grab the loop now with my fingers, yarn over and pull through the two loops on my hook. And you can always give that a little tug if you need to. So let's work through that again, nice and slow. So we're gonna hold the yarn with our index finger and just get in the habit of holding it about the same height for each loop. So I find this is a comfortable height. So that's the size that I'll be making the loops for the blanket. So we're going through the stitch. I'm going to go over the yarn, going through the hole, twisting my hook, grabbing the yarn from behind and pulling it through. Grabbing the yarn, the loop, yarn over and pull through two. Again, we're gonna hold that yarn up, go through the stitch, going around, through, grabbing the yarn from behind, pulling it through, grabbing that loop to hold it out of the way, yarn over and pull through. So this is how your loops and the stitch will be looking. So just for reference, my loop is about a one and a half inches. And that for me is comfortable if you make them a little smaller, or a little longer, because it's a comfortable tension and hold for you, that's great. But to use approximately the same yarn that I'm gonna use for my blanket, my loops are about one and a half inches. So now we'll just continue working across the row and believe me, this will speed up. It's I'm going through it fairly slow with you, but once you get the rhythm for it and the hang of it, you can work it pretty quickly. And you really will get a feel for just wrapping, going around, through, pulling. 
So now you're working across the 60 stitches. I just have this smaller swatch. It's always good to make a small swatch like this to start with, just so you can check your gauge. And just make sure that you have the correct number of stitches. Always that last stitch can be sometimes missed. So just make sure that you're keeping your stitches consistent throughout, even if you need to add a stitch marker. Stitch markers in the first and last stitches so you stay on track. Now we'll chain one and turn, and all of the rows between the loops will be a row of single crochet. So this is a quick, easy row that you will work. You're just working across single crochet stitches. So whenever you're to the right side of your work, you'll work single crochets. And when you go back to the wrong side of your work, you'll work a loop stitch across. Once you've reached the end of your row, you'll chain one and turn. And then we'll, we're back to the wrong side and we'll start crocheting loop stitches again. So go through the stitch, go over the yarn around, grabbing the yarn from in behind. Okay, grab the yarn, yarn over, pulling through the two loops on the hook finishing that stitch. Now, if your yarn starts to tug, that can be a problem. I try to pull out some yarn that it's loose because I find with loop stitches, if your yarn is tight, if the tension's tight, it will really make it hard to work those loops and it'll really tire out your finger. So you wanna make sure you have nice loose yarn available so that you're not straining your fingers. Go through. So now what we're gonna do is continue just working, alternating these rows, a loop stitch row and a single crochet row. So here is the beginning section of my blanket and I've worked a total of 18 rows for the toddler size. So in total, that is nine rows of the loop stitches and we're ending on the loop stitch row before we change in to the stripe color pattern. So my blanket width is about 33 inches and my section that I'm working here, my 18 rows, is about eight inches. When we get to our striping section, it's about 10 inches. So in total, the length of this blanket is gonna be 26 inches by about the 33 inch mark. So the gauge for this pattern, just so you're on track, it's always easy to look at the wrong side just so you can really see the rows. So your stitches, if we measure out in four inches, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, about 7.5 and sometimes I like to check it in some different spots one two three four five six seven so we're at about 7.5 stitches and then the rows I like to use the color because I have two two rows for each color so two four six eight and about nine rows, it looks like, for the stitch pattern. So now once you've worked up your 18 rows, you will be ending on that loop stitch row, finishing off with the loop stitch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how to work your color pattern. Of course, you'll have a lot more work. This is just a small demonstration. So when you change your color, with the loop stitch, I like to complete the loop stitch in that color just to get that loop stitch made. And then I am going to change to, this is the color pattern that I'm doing. Of course you can use any color, any combination you want. I'm going with sea green to emerald to the glowing gold and then the ultra blue. 
So what I will do is I'm gonna slip stitch, just pulling that through and then tugging on that tail. That's just so I'm sure that my loop stitch is properly completed. I won't change the color on the last stitch like I normally would, which I'll do when I'm changing these colors. So we'll chain one and turn. Now what I like to do is crochet over this tail. Just to save on a little bit of weaving, I like to crochet on it so far this way and then at the end you can weave it back in the opposite direction. So you should be on to the right side of your blanket for your color. And then we're just working across in single crochet stitches. So each color I will work two rows. So all the color changes are gonna happen on the one side of the blanket, okay? So they'll all be happening over here. Now you can cut the gray at this point because we won't be using it again for a while, but I'm just gonna leave mine attached because I'll, I'll pull this little swatch out when I'm finished. So when you get to the end of the row, you'll just chain one and turn and work back across the row in single crochet stitches. So this time for my last stitch, I will pull over with the sea green to complete my stitch. So pull up a loop. Sorry, the emerald, I'm bringing in the emerald now. So I will pull through to complete the stitch and chain one. Now what we're gonna do is turn and for every first stitch when we're on this side, we are gonna crochet over the tails because we're gonna pull them up the blanket. And I will pop up another demonstration with the full blanket so you can see how many tails I'm pulling up along the side. But I'll show you just with this stitch how it will work. So we're gonna go through the stitch and we're just going over, we're gonna put our hook under those tails. Now we're going to drop off the sea green because the sea green will only be carried up one stitch. I'm going to crochet over the emerald tail here as I go. But by carrying the, the tails, all the tails up this side, we won't have any tails to weave and we'll be adding the pom-poms or the fringe to the side of the blanket so you're not really going to notice the extra thickness that this will create and it's just going to save you some time and it's a nice little technique trick that you can do so you don't have the weaving. So now all we're going to do is work again two rows in single crochet in the emerald and then we'll change to the glowing gold and I'll go through that step one more time with you. Okay, so I'm coming to the last stitch. What I want you to do is take this tail and put your hook. So I want it to go over top of your hook. And as we are going up this further, we're gonna have up to three strands. We'll be doing this too at one time. So lay that over your hook. Then you're gonna just take your hook and go through that final stitch, pull through. We wanna give this a tug and then you'll be bringing in your new color. So then we'll chain one. Just give these tails a tug just to make sure they're secure. We're gonna turn and now we will be pulling all three of those tails over. So when we go through the stitch, we're going through the stitch, making sure all those tails are above our hook. Okay, then we're pulling up the loop, pulling it through. And then we're dropping off the colors that we're carrying up. And I'm of course gonna continue to crochet over this tail. As you get more into the pattern, you won't have those tails to crochet over. But the first time we're adding them in, we've got the tail that we wanna just crochet over to get rid of it. But as you can see now, we're pulling these tails up the side. We're just hiding them in that first stitch. So it's only the first stitch 
that you have the tails being carried. So then we'll do two rows in the glowing gold and then we'll do two rows in the ultra blue and then we'll just repeat the pattern okay so we'll continue carrying our tails up the side and just alternating the colors so i'm going to do a section of the four colors three times so i'll just show you that on the larger blanket okay so as you can see we start with sea green we go to emerald gold and blue and then we've re i've repeated that a total of three times so one two three so that should be about 10 inches of worth of work if you're on track with the gauge and then at this point we'll be going back again to the loop stitch so I'm just gonna pull my work here back in. I'm gonna grab my gray yarn and just show you how to get working again into the main color loop stitch pattern. So once the striping section has been completed, you can weave in all of your tails and we're gonna bring back in our main color Just pull that through chain one and turn. So now we'll, we're back to the right side of our work. So we'll work across a row of single crochet. So now this section is basically just a repeat of the beginning section that we did. So we want to do a total of 18 rows again, alternating between our single crochet and our loop stitch. So I'm not gonna work through all of this with you. You're just gonna work across now in single crochets and then back in the loop stitch like I've already shown you how to create. So you're gonna continue working up 18 rows ending with your loop stitch row. So I'm just finishing off the blanket section with a row of single crochet across the top. And once you've completed that, you can just fasten off and weave in all of your tails. So most of our tails to weave will be right here. So what I did when I was working through my stripe pattern, I crocheted over these tails. So now all I'm going to do is weave them back into the opposite direction to make sure that they stay secure. So I'm just going to do this for all my tails. So now to crochet the hood for our llama blanket, I'll be using the main color with our larger hook. And let's get a slip knot on the hook. And we'll begin by chaining out seven. Now in the second chain from the hook, we'll work extended single crochets. So the extended single crochet, we're going through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. So the extended single crochet is about the height of a half double crochet stitch. So work that along your chain and in the final chain, we're going to work two extended single crochet. And now working to the opposite side of the chain, we're just going to repeat this pattern. So two extended single crochet into the first chain. pull that tail 
And then we're working down the opposite side of this chain now into the next five. So for row two, which is the wrong side of our work, we're now gonna start working our loop stitches. So we're gonna work a loop stitch in the first stitch and in each of the next five. Oh, into the next four. Okay, so a loop stitch in the first, so five in total, one, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna work two loop stitches in each of the next four. So these four stitches here, we're now gonna work two. So you work your one loop, and then you go right back in and just make another one to increase. So do that in the next three stitches as well, and then just complete working your five loops down the side. Okay, we'll chain one and turn, and now we're gonna work extended single crochets in the first stitch and in the next five stitches. So one, two, three, Four. So six in total. And then we'll work two extended single crochet in each of the next six stitches. So I'll work that off camera. I'll go through the first one with you. And then just complete the rest in extended single crochets. Okay, so I've completed that, chain one and turn. And now for row four, we're just gonna work one loop stitch in each stitch around. Okay, so I've completed that. So now for row five, we're gonna work an extended single crochet in the first stitch and the next seven. So eight in total. And then we're, we're gonna work two extended single crochet into each of the next eight. So you'll work two, in each of the next eight, and then just finish off working extended single crochets in the final stitches. Now we'll chain one and turn, and we'll work a loop stitch into every stitch around. So now we're at a total of 32 stitches, and that's as many increases as we're gonna do for this pattern. Oops. Okay, so now for row seven, we'll work one extended single crochet into every stitch for a total of 32 stitches. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is repeat rows six and seven two times. So our rows eight through 11 will be a repeat of row six and seven two times. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crochet up those four more rows. So we're just repeating doing our loop stitch row and our extended single crochet row. So work up to row 11 and then I will meet you up again. 
Okay, so here's how the hood's looking at this point. Now I'm on to row 12, which is going to be a loop stitch row. And this time we're going to work one loop stitch in each of the next nine stitches. So work across nine. And now we'll work extended single crochets in each of the next 14 stitches. So I'll go across 14 and then meet you up again. Then you should have nine stitches remaining and we'll work a loop stitch into each of those remaining nine stitches. Okay, so the next row will just work one extended single crochet into each stitch across. And we're going to work a loop stitch now in each of the next eight stitches. So go ahead and work eight loops and I'll meet you up again. Okay, so now you can work one extended single crochet in each of the next 16 stitches. So I'll work those across and then I'll meet you up again. Okay, so now I have eight stitches remaining and we'll complete those with loop stitches. So a loop in each of the next eight. So I'll complete that and meet you up again. Okay, so I've chained one and turned and now we're gonna work an extended single crochet in every stitch across. Okay, so now for row 16, we're gonna work a loop stitch in each of the next seven stitches. So go ahead and work up your seven and then I'll meet you up. Once you've completed seven, then we'll work extended single crochets in each of the next 18. So I'll work those and then I'll meet you up once I've completed them. Okay, and then you should have seven stitches remaining and we'll finish them off with a loop in each stitch. And this is our final row with our loop stitches. We're just gonna finish off the hood now with a row of single crochet. Chain one and turn. So now just to finish it off, we'll work across in single crochets and fasten off leaving a long tail. Okay, so I'm just gonna fasten this off. I'm gonna make sure it's a nice long tail because we'll use that to sew to the blanket. Okay, and this is how the hood's looking. So we have this little area here for making the face. And I also will just measure the hood out for you just so you can make sure that your sizing is good. So the back of the hood, we're looking at about seven and the total width of the hood is about 17 inches. Okay, so to make the ears, I'm gonna drop down and use my 6.5 millimeter hook for the toddler. So we'll chain two and work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Chain one and turn, work two single crochet, chain one and turn, work a single crochet in each stitch across, chain one, work two single crochet, and one single crochet in the next, chain one and turn. Now for row five through nine, we'll work one single crochet in each stitch across for a total of three stitches. 
Okay, so I've worked up a total of nine rows. So row 10, we'll chain one, work one single crochet in each stitch across, and we'll add two in the final stitch, and then we're gonna single crochet around our ear, adding three up in the corner. So when you're working up your sides, just make sure to count, because you want an even number on each side of your ear. Okay, so I have eight, and then in the top we'll do three. Pull that tight, and then continue to work down the side. So I've worked down eight, but then we'll add another here in the corner and slip stitch to join. And then we'll fasten off, leaving a tail to sew that. And you wanna make two of your ears. So to crochet the muzzle, we'll be using the smaller hook with our main color. And we'll begin with a magic ring. Slide your hook through all three loops, grabbing your first loop and pulling it through. We'll chain one and work six single crochet in the ring. Pull the ring tight, so I like to move the work out of the way, take my tail, start to pull it, only one loop's gonna pull in. Take that loop, give it a tug, take your tail and pull, and now you have a nice tight circle. Slip stitch in the first single crochet to join. Chain one, and now we'll work two single crochet into every stitch around. little tight. So you'll increase from six to 12 stitches. We'll slip stitch to join and for round three we'll work one single crochet into every stitch around. We'll slip stitch to join, chain one, and for row four we'll work one round four one single crochet one single crochet in the first stitch, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So we'll repeat that pattern all the way around. So one, and then two. So you'll be increasing to 18 stitches. Now for round five, we'll chain one and work a single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 18 stitches. Then we'll slip stitch to join, chain one, and we'll do another increase round. So we're gonna work a single crochet in the first two stitches, and then we'll work two in the next. So again, the repeat pattern will be one in the next two, and then two single crochet into the next. So just repeat that around, increasing to 24 stitches. Slip stitch to join. And then for round seven, we're gonna work one single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 24 stitches. And then we'll fasten off with a long tail for sewing. Okay, so I'll fasten off with the long tail. And now we'll just need to embroider a nose to the muzzle. And I'm just gonna cut a piece of super bulky yarn at 16 inches. And I'm going to cut a couple pieces for my eyes too. So in total, just cut up three pieces of black super bulky yarn about 16 inches in length. Okay, so to make our nose, we're just going to do a little Y shape. And I'm going to go around about the first two rounds. 
So you're just gonna take your black yarn on your yarn needle and we're gonna make a Y shape. Really simple. Going down through the center and then we just wanna make this piece here. And there you go. And all I'm gonna do now is just knot my tails to the inside and give them a trim. Now you can stuff the snout with a little bit of polyester fill just to kind of keep its shape. And then it's just gonna go on our llama like this and the little ears are gonna go up here. We're gonna sew them to our extended single crochet row rather than the loop stitch row. So they're just gonna go right here. Now what we can also do is embroider the eyes on his little face as well. And all you're basically doing is just taking your yarn. I had you cut those extra pieces and you're just gonna make a little sleepy eye that's basically gonna be covered up by his loop stitches, but it's still gonna look cute with just that little sleepy eye right here. And just so I know where to sew the eyes, I'm gonna get my muzzle piece sewn onto the hood. Make sure that you have it centered. And also when you're sewing it on, just don't go through the final row of stitches because we still need to work a single crochet edge. So when you're sewing it, I just want you going through a piece of the hood and going through the back loop only of the stitch. So you're just gonna go around the muzzle piece sewing it in place. So I'm gonna do that off camera. Again, the stuffing will just help give it its shape. The, this yarn does hold pretty well, but just if you wanna make sure that it does stick out, you can add a little bit of that fill. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera. So I'm just pinching together the bottom of the ear and sewing a couple stitches just to hold the bottom of the ear pinched together. And then I'm gonna add the ears right in here to that row of single, extended single crochet. And just make sure when you sew them on, you do so even. And you can always just wait on weaving your tail in to the end. So make sure before you weave your tail that the ears are in a good position because they're easy to pull back off if you haven't woven in those, those ends. So I just like to sew all the way around the ear And pinching the bottom gives it a little bit more stability. So you wanna try the hood on at this point and just make sure that the ears do stick up. And I'll go ahead and add the other ear as well. Okay, so I've already added one eye and basically you're just gonna make a U shape. So go down, across, and then up. And we just wanna try to get in here and be even. So you can always pull it back. If you go through and it's your eyes off, you can always pull it out 
I don't always get it perfect the first time. So you just want to come down I'm just trying to gauge how I work the other side. Then you're gonna do your little piece across. Okay, and then finishing. just like that. Again, I might fiddle with my eye just to get it a little bit better, but that's basically the idea that you want to, about the same, just making little sleepy eyes. So then all I'm going to do at the back is just knot, knot my pieces and trim them. Okay, so once you're for sure satisfied with how your little eyes look, that's all you need to do. Just give them a trim. Okay, and as long as you're happy with how the placement of your ears and your muzzle is, you can just finish by weaving in those tails. I left mine just to make sure that I liked the placement of everything. But once you're satisfied, just weave in your tails. And then the hood will be ready to sew to the blanket. Okay, so now we're gonna work up the little mittens and I'm gonna use my 6.5 millimeter hook and the main color yarn. So we'll make a magic ring. And I will chain one. And then I'll work nine single crochet in that ring. Okay, now I'll pull the ring tight. And we'll slip stitch into the first single crochet to join. Chain one and work two single crochet into every stitch around. So we're increasing from nine stitches to 18 stitches. Okay, we'll slip stitch to join. And now rounds three through 10, we're just gonna work one single crochet into every stitch around. So I'm gonna work up those rounds off camera and I'll meet you up when I've completed a total of 10 rounds. So rounds three through 10 are just working one single crochet in every stitch around. Okay, so once we have a total of 10 rounds, I'm just gonna fasten it off with a tail for sewing to the blanket. Make sure to keep your tail to the corner. You can also weave in that tail. I'm just gonna stick it down here for now because we're gonna use it to make our little toe shape. So what you'll do is just use this tail, come through, and we're just going to sew the toe together. I'm just gonna knot it just to really secure that. So basically you're just pinching it This yarn needle is a little big just to get our little shape and you can still fit your, their little hands inside. So then we can just weave in this tail now. Okay, so you just wanna make two of your little toe mitts and then they can be sewn to the top few rows of the blanket. 
Okay, so next we're going to attach the hood to the blanket. So what you want to do is just center your hood on the blanket, count your stitches or measure from each side. So I counted across 14 stitches and I added a marker. I did the same thing on this side and I'm going to sew my hood in between those markers. So now you should have your long tail attached from the hood. So you'll want to use a yarn needle for bulky yarn. And just make sure that your loops are all tucked down when you're sewing. So I'll go through a stitch of the blanket and then I'm just coming over and grabbing through the hood. So just make sure you get all of the loops tucked and that the hood is going right across to that other marker that you're sewing it on nice and even. So now we'll just go through each stitch of the blanket. And going through the back section of the hood. So when you lay it out, you've got the back of the hood against the right side of the blanket. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew mine now off camera and then I'll meet you up when I have that complete. Okay, so once you've worked all the way across, you can then weave in your tail. Okay, so the last thing we want to do now is just edge across the top here. We're not going to edge the entire blanket. We're only going to go across the top and the hood just to clean that transition up from the blanket to the hood. Okay, so we're going to want to come up to our top right hand corner and join in with a chain one. And then we'll work single crochet stitches across and I'll just crochet over that tail as I go. So you're just going to work this across going right across the hood and across the top of the blanket. So at the edge here of the hood, you should just be able to easily transition from the side of the blanket just across the hood. And as you come across here, you'll see that we'll need to work into those stitches and that's why you needed to make sure that you didn't sew that muzzle right into those stitches of the hood. And once you're all the way to the other side, we can just fasten this off and weave in our tails. Okay, so the next step will be to add the little hooves here, the little toe mitts to the side. So you can decide how you want to place them on. You're just going to sew to these top few rows of the blanket. So I'll just take my yarn needle and I am going to sew here this section of the mitt to the top rows of the blanket. Just make sure not to get any of those loops when you're sewing. 
So I'm just going through the side of the blanket to the stitch of the mitten. Okay, so I'll just complete that across and do the same thing with the other side. Okay, so I have them both sewn on and it looks cute for modeling them with the little toes out this way. And now the next step will be to either add some fringe or pom-poms to the side of your color. So the original blanket I did, I added fringe. And to do that, you're just going to put your light color. So put some, I do about four strands of each color going across. So you can add the fringe and to attach your fringe, all you do with your hook is go through the side adding your fringe. I have four pieces of course, not just one and pull it through like, like so, or like what I'm going to show you how to do now is some pom poms. I'm going to use my pom pom maker because it makes them so quick and easy. And I'm just going to line up my pom poms along here. So depending on what size you're working on, just put as many pom poms as you want spaced out along the color work section of the blanket. Okay, so I have a fair amount left with the taller size blanket in my color, so I'll easily be able to make my pom-poms. Now, for your child adult size, you may want to grab some extra balls of yarn because the pom-poms will eat up a lot of this. But now if you decide to do the fringe, the fringe you won't need as much yarn. The pom-poms definitely use it up pretty good. So this is a clover pom-pom maker. This is the jumbo size. I'll have a link in the description box. That makes a really nice size pom-pom, but you could really make your pom-poms any size. And if you make them a bit smaller, they also won't use as much yarn. So if you haven't used a pom-pom maker before, what you want to do is pull out your arms. Then what you do, I prefer to go from the outside of the ball when making the pom-poms just because the yarn won't be as crinkly. And then you're just filling up the yarn the arm with your yarn. So you're just going back and forth, filling it all in. I like to at least cover up the entire arm. And the more yarn you add, the thicker and fuller the pom pom. So the fewer strands you do, it will just be not as full and loose a pom-pom. So I'm going to go ahead and work that up and I'll meet you up when I have this arm. Okay, so then once you're happy with the amount of wrapping, you just want to trim your tail and then you're going to pop that arm into place. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other arm. When this side is complete, you just want to skip that and now pop it all together. Then what we're going to do is go into the groove of the pom-pom maker and we're going to cut all of the yarn. So now the next step is to take a long piece of yarn and we're going to go through the grooves of the pom-pom maker. Now what you want to do is when you're making your knot, we're going to go through once and then go through another time and this is going to help secure this when you pull it tight. So you want to pull this as tight as you can without breaking your yarn. That's going to help hold all of the pieces. So then we'll do the double knot. 
then we'll go to the other side and we're going to do the same thing. So you're going to go once and then twice because we know this will hold. When we pull it down, it won't loosen off and then knot it. And then this will make the pom-pom nice and secure. Now you can just open up your arms to take the pom-pom out. This just snaps apart. And then these tails is what we'll use to fasten it to the blanket. Now you'll notice the pom-pom comes out pretty perfect. You'll get the odd little straggle bit that you need to trim. The odd little stragglers, but for the most part, you'll have a perfect pom-pom with very little trimming. So I just have a few scraps. Okay, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is make two of each color for the side of the blanket. Okay, so I've made all my pom-poms. I still have some yarn left. So if you were gonna make more, you still have enough. And you may, you may almost get away with making this many pom-poms for the child size with how much I have left, but it could be iffy whether you make it or not. So anyways, I've got mine two of each color and now I'm just gonna add them to the side of the blanket. So I'm gonna take my yarn needle just to help attach these to the side. So let me go this way. So what you'll want to do is take your yarn needle and that's just gonna help you get your yarn through there. And you can just tie these in a bow and then they'll be very easy to remove. If you need to remove them for washing. Now this blanket I would only spot clean it if possible. If you have to wash it, um, definitely do not put it in the dryer. I would hand wash or put it on a really gentle cycle. But it would be preferred that you don't wash it, just more so spot clean it. So I'll now just attach these to the center here between these two pom-poms. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell so you stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.